Sunlink has a bit of an interesting perspective on the solar industry because we're looking to creative solutions from tech to converge those industries and learn as fast as we can from what they're doing and apply that to us. You don't want to reduce metal if it means you're losing your structural integrity of your system. Right. But if you can be smart about the way that you're teaching your system to move out of the way of the wind, if you have this data combined with machine learning and control functionality, you can give your system some artificial intelligence so that you can reduce metal because you're not designing for the code level wind or even your wind tunnel testing. You're actually teaching your system to see, you know, the wind speed is getting up to 35 miles per hour. I perform best at 15 degree tilt in that wind speed. So I'm just going to move out of the way of the wind. When the wind drops back down again, I'll move back into optimal tilt. You lower prices, you make more projects happen and you do better for the solar industry and you can expand the places that solar can go. When you have more data, you can understand better how your system is performing. You can also do things if you tie your data to your control capabilities, which we find to be very important because one of the, I would say the biggest cost associated with O&M is truck rolls. So we don't want to roll a truck anytime there's an alert, anytime there's an error. We want to be able to have your control function of your system in the exact same place as you're reading your data so that if it's just as simple as resetting and restarting something, you can do that and you don't have to send someone out onto the field. We want to make sure that solar is leading the way, that we show people how to do cybersecurity for these energy assets. You want to protect your data so people can be very sensitive about their data and not wanting to share that and have that get out. The bigger risk for me is the control capability. So that's where uh, two-factor authentication is really important. For a, an example that I think most of us see in your, your RSA dongle, is your kind of second factor of authentication in a lot of the financial sector. That's called tokenization. So it's uh, only the main server knows that number and then you have your own personal number and it, the only way you can communicate with your bank account is by having that. So that's what we're implementing on the control capability that if you want to control anything on your system, you need two-factor authentication. We also have air-gapped the private cloud, which is what allows for controls of the system from the public cloud, which is where you read data from. So if you are just going into a system to see a piece of data on that, you're not getting anywhere near the same server that could control any of those, any of those systems out on site. So things like that are very important. That's all part of the architecture of what we're building. We're doing everything through a RESTful API, and we're trying to work with partners to also build out RESTful APIs. And what that means is that it's more loosely coupled. So different software pieces can talk to each other without having to know so intimately the way the data is structured on the other side. When I think about that, if you have a bucket of Legos and you want to know what, how many of the different colors of Legos are inside that box, you don't want to dump out the bucket of Legos and sort them all and count them all. That's too intimately coupled. What you want to do is just ask the box of Legos how many yellow Legos are inside. So that's what a RESTful API does. For solar, I don't want to go into the inverter and look at what Modbus registry I need to be pulling data from. I want to just ask the inverter the piece of data that I want to know. So that's what that, that abstraction layer gives you is this the inverter company can change their Modbus registry architecture anytime they like, and it won't affect the way that I gather data and control that inverter. I would like solar to be just as much fun as anything else that the technology industry is doing. So if, if you also want to see the advancement of solar in that way, I, I would advise you to come talk to Sunlink and see how we can do that together.